Hey guys, so I just wanted to kind of go over the notes that you guys are going to do today. Um, lucky for you guys, you'll get to watch this entire video. Um, today's assignment is going to be questions based off of the PowerPoint that you aren't going to, well, there it is. Okay, so here we go. So this topic is one that comes up a lot when we do our notes about Africa. Um, so as we go through the different regions of Africa, this is going to be a common theme Sorry, my cats are really dumb. Um, just ignore them. Um, but this is a common theme throughout our unit on Africa. So every region we talk about, this will be something that comes up a lot. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in with something that we should already know about and be familiar with just as an example. Okay, so what we already know. So we know how the American colonies kind of played out. So we know that the British, they sent settlers to the new world, they settle, they set up these um, colonies, they use it for financial gain. So the whole idea behind the colonies was, hey, you know what? In England or in Britain, we have a really small island. It's not the best place for farming. So let's go to this new place and maybe it will be better. And it was. So they were able to grow crops like cotton, tobacco, and um, also there was other animals that they could hunt there, such as like beavers and other animals. They could take their fur and their pelts and ship those back to Great Britain and turn them into clothing and things like that. So the British used the American colonies to gain wealth. So they produced goods and the British profited. So the American colonists didn't benefit. Thank you, Mr. Short, for getting the cats. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so they, the British used the colonies for profit and the colonists in the colonies didn't benefit at all. In fact, they were actually taxed and they had harsh rules and laws imposed on them. And this made it very difficult for the colonists. So we know that they grew upset with it. They grew upset with the taxation without representation. They grew upset with the amount of wealth that was being acquired and the power that the British were exerting from 3000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean. So this led to the American Revolution and the American colonists wanted all the smoke. They got it. They told the British to come catch these hands. They did that. We won. And that's how the Americas started. So how, how does this play out with Africa? Because we're not talking about the Americas. We're talking about Africa. Okay, so imperialism and colonialism. These are two words that are very similar. They have similar definitions. But ultimately, they do mean something different. So um, imperialism is the policy of extending a country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. So if a country sends their military to occupy a foreign land for a long period of time and they use that occupation as a form of diplomacy, we call that imperialism. Colonialism is a policy or practice of gaining political control over another country, occupying it with settlers and taking advantage of it economically. Colonialism is you send people from your country to that far away distant land and you have them set up shop. They stay there, they live there, they take over the industries, they take over the businesses, and ultimately they end up taking over the government leadership positions as well. So in practice, these policies benefit the imperialist or colonizing country at the expense of the country in which they are colonizing. So in our case of the Americas, um, this was British was the imperialist co uh, colonial country and the American colonies were the, the colonists and they were being hurt by the British occupying that area. OK, just ask the Native Americans how that turned out. Didn't work out so great for them. Um, so an example, British benefited. The Americans were hurt, specifically Native Americans that were very, very hurt. Okay? So that's the, that's the definitions that we've kind of settled for with imperialism and colonialism. Do that. Okay, here we go. Sorry. This, I kind of, see, it just has a mind of its own. So, a little bit of lag. A little bit of lag. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it wasn't just America. So, we're talking about Africa. So, Africa was heavily colonized by Europe, by Europeans. Um, specifically, there was actually seven European countries that go to Africa and colonize it. Um, you can see there on the little my mouse work. You can see here on this map, it shows you the different countries that actually occupy parts of Africa. So the Belgians, the French, the Germans, the British, the Italians, and the Portuguese, and the Spanish all set up colonies in Africa. Um, and the main reason they did it was because Africa had a ton of resources. 
I repeat, a ton of resources. Okay, we're talking diamonds, we're talking silver, gold, mining, spices, um, all different types of resources. And that meant lots of cash for the Europeans. Okay, so they looked at it and they saw it as a source of raw materials. They're like, hey, this place, they're not using these resources, they're not utilizing them. Um, so let's go there and we'll utilize them. So the Europeans go to Africa, they colonize it. So what, what does that look like? Okay, so how did they do it? Okay, here we go. This is, sorry guys, Google. I don't know if you guys have been experiencing this. I'm sure you have, but Google doesn't know what it's doing right now. It just kind of does what it wants. We're not. Okay, this is going from bad to worse. Okay. Okay. So how do they do it? So Africa was loosely organized into smaller trading kingdoms or empires. And you can see on this map, like they overlap. They didn't really have clear cut boundaries. I mean, there's entire areas here where there's just like a whole lot of nothing going on. And then there was these other parts that were, you know, very congested and were set up for trading. And like, I'm not even going to give you all the names here, but you can see all the different kingdoms on this key here. There was a lot. So they were not very united. There's lots of different ethnic groups, there's different languages, there's different religions, and different leadership in all these different trading kingdoms. So there's a lot of differences, you know, a lot of small groups of people, and they were way less advanced. So they didn't have as good of weapons, they didn't have as good of a military, their technology was not on par um, with the Europeans. The Europeans just went in and just took it, all right? They, they didn't have that much resistance the Africans didn't. So the Europeans were able to go in and you know, take control of it relatively easily. And this made it uh, very easy for them to colonize it. Okay, so what were the negatives? So let's take a look at the negatives. So the negatives that happened here is the Europeans drew borders without the consideration of the people. So we talked about the trading kingdoms and ultimately, um, when the Europeans go in there, they didn't respect those trading kingdoms. They didn't respect the ethnicities of people there, the difference of religion, the different governments. Um, so they treated Africans differently. Um, a good example is in um, Rwanda, for example. Um, they went in and they actually divided the people up. And the way they did it is they created these ethnic groups. They essentially went in and they were like, okay, you're a little bit taller. You got a slimmer nose. You're, you have a lighter skin complexion. You're not as dark. Um, you look more European per se, so you guys will be known as Tutsis, and the shorter, stockier, darker um, individuals in Rwanda became known as Hutus, and they divided them up. And the thing that's really crazy about it is they would take a family, right? Like you'd have like a mom, dad, and kids, and they'd be like, okay, dad's a Hutu, mom's a Tutsi, and then these kids are, you know, whatever. Like they, they there was no process to doing it. So they didn't respect their ethnicities or differences. So this creates ethnic tension within these new colonies that they set up. They also introduced Western religions. So they brought Christianity there, the Europeans did. And then, um, you know, Islam was already there for the most part. So you had Islam, you had Christianity, you had different forms of Christianity that were brought there. And then you also had the um, ethnic, the um, native religions, okay, like the tribal religions that existed there. So this creates religious differences. So you have ethnic tension, you have religious tension, and ultimately the Europeans went in there with the sole purpose of taking the natural resources in Africa, using the Africans as very inexpensive, oftentimes free labor to harvest those resources. And the Europeans would take them, take those resources back to Europe, and they would sell them for huge profits. Sometimes they would actually have the Africans harvest the material, they would take it back to Europe, and then they would try to sell it back to the Africans. And uh, this blood, the country drive its resources and any kind of financial or monetary power that they had. And ultimately what this does is it creates an African reliance on European planning and governance. So the people that were in Africa, they relied on the leadership of the European countries to determine what they should do or what they were going to, how they would handle things. And this reliance um, becomes far more apparent later when the Europeans leave. 
Okay, so the positives. So what are the positives, if there are any? There's there's definitely positives that take place as a result of European colonization. One of them is the new technology that they brought into Africa. They brought better infrastructure and transportation into Africa. Um, and we're talking these cities that are in Africa that the Europeans essentially built. And these cities um, have huge, you know, huge buildings, architecture, um, transportation. They set up railroads. They built highway systems. They built airports. So the um, infrastructure and transportation was a big deal. They brought education to Africa. Now, this one is kind of a positive or a negative, depending how you look at it. So traditionally in Africa, education was done um, in small town basis. But when the Europeans come in, they set up larger schools and require children to attend these schools while their parents were forced to work. And in these schools, they would teach them these new languages. So for example, the French colonized areas, they would teach the children French. And this is, carries on to the next point. They introduced European languages and they served as the lingua franca, which is a vocab term you guys will um, do. And pretty much what that meant is that is a language that is widely used throughout that region, depending where you're at in Africa. So that could be Italian, it could be German, it could be French or English. And even to this day, like current date in Africa, they use a lot of these European languages. Okay, so how does all this, you know, why are we talking about this? Why is this? Why is this important? Why is it so significant that this section of notes is different than any other section of notes you've ever done? And I'll tell you, so how it affects Africa today. So when independence was achieved, so when the Europeans leave and they leave the African people to set up their own governments, they were left completely alone to figure out how to do it. And when they did this, this led to corruption. And so the people did not know how to govern themselves um, so what happened is people that were in the military or really affluent, wealthy people in these places would oftentimes seize control of the country and use it to just benefit themselves and not the majority of the people within those countries. So that leads to massive amount of corruption. Um, just to give you an example, in the country of the Congo, um, they had a, a female prime minister who was arrested for uh, embezzling funds. And she went to court and in court, she told the jury that a snake ate all the money and that's where the money went. And the jury was like, OK, not guilty. So that's the level of corruption we're talking about. Uh, massive lack of resources because the Europeans took most of the resources. And so a lot of the resources that are left were either you know, picked over or completely gone through or they didn't really know how to utilize those resources and monetize them, like use them to make money. Internal relationships equal a lack of wealth. So international relationships um, are very important when you are in a global economy. So if you're a country in Africa and you have gold, that's great. But if you don't know who to sell the gold to or you don't know how to sell the gold to other countries, then you're not going to make money off of it. It doesn't matter how much of it you have. If you can't sell it, you're not making any money. So this leads to a lack of wealth, um, ethnic and religious tension. So there have been civil wars and conflicts throughout Africa. A good example is in Sudan. You had a huge Muslim population. You had a huge Christian population. Um, the Christians wanted um, a secular government. They wanted a government that was not religious. They wanted a government that represented all the different religious differences throughout the country. And the Muslims were like, no, we want we want a theocratic government. We want a Muslim government. They wanted essentially like a Sharia law. And this led to a conflict known as the Sudanese genocide or the Sudanese civil war. And this is why you have Sudan and South Sudan. Um, it also leads to problems of colonial descendants versus natives. So another example, this is in South Africa. Um, you have the Dutch settlers. So they were from Europe, right? Their family heritage is from Europe. Um, but they live in South Africa and they're white, but their nationality is African. So they're African, but their skin color, their race is white. And then you also have black South Africans that live there. And so now you have a government where there's people who are white African and people who are black African, and they're taking rights away from one another. And one of the main things, and we'll talk about it later on in this unit, is we'll talk about the apartheid in South Africa, which is a system of segregation that separated whites and blacks forcefully through government law. So 
We'll talk more about that later. But this is a problem that colonialism definitely sets up. A lack of medical and educational resources. So we always, whenever we talk about Africa, people always bring up the fact that it's a poor, it's a poor continent. They lack educational resources and they lack medical resources. So um, I'm sure you guys have heard of Ebola. Um, some of you years ago would probably cough and say, I have Ebola. Um, well, they have Ebola in Africa and malaria and all kinds of different viral diseases, and they lack the medications and the science to treat those things. They oftentimes rely on foreigners, Europeans or Americans to help um, with those medical outbreaks. Okay, So they lack those medical resources. And then Western religions and Western religions and languages are widespread throughout Africa. And apparently Google said, I don't need to see this in full screen and I'm not going to try and fix it. So we'll just roll with this. So Western religions and languages are widespread, widespread throughout Africa. And so now if you go to Africa today or we look at Africa today, you'll see like countries like Ethiopia are extremely Catholic. Um, Christianity is very popular throughout Africa, but so is Islam. And so the religion, the language is used throughout Africa. And this ultimately leads to this concept that we call whitewashing of Africa, African culture, because Africa used to have these very rich tribal traditions and languages. Um, and those languages are starting to disappear. The culture is starting to disappear and their history altogether is disappearing. Um, this is a similar phenomenon that happened in the Americas. Um, with Native Americans, you know, now Native Americans speak English, they wear jeans. Um, sorry, this is PETA. You, PETA, it's an acronym, P-I-T-A. You probably know what that stands for. That's why she's named that, because that's what she does. Um, but yes, so that's it for the notes. There will be questions that are posted that you guys will need to answer. It will be due at the end of the day. Hopefully you find this video helpful. I know I think it's gonna be helpful for my analytics on my YouTube channel. Maybe uh, the duration of my videos will be longer than 12 seconds. Um, but I don't know, maybe not. But you'll need the video to answer those questions. So hopefully you find this helpful and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye for now.